Welcome back to Tools and Books. We continue where we left off on video one. So we start with video two, still speaking of geometry and of lines in mathematics. Someone just asked me what does the 4IR stand for? It's for the fourth industrial revolution. Mathematics that is digitally enhanced for your viewing pleasure. In the last video, we stopped at parallel lines, so I think it's important that we explain parallel lines a little bit more. Um, parallel lines are lines in the same plane. It does not touch each other. It never meets. It never ever does not matter how far or how long the lines may be. It will never cross over or come closer to each other. It stays the same distance apart. It never changes. So, what is a transversal line? It's a line that cuts the two parallel lines. It runs through the two parallel lines. Could also be two, two normal lines. Um, a line that cuts two lines uh, could also be mathematically correct. That a transversal line is a line that cuts more than one line. So it's not necessarily parallel lines, but also it cuts any line that cuts two or more lines is called a transversal line. So it says if a transversal line cuts two parallel lines, corresponding angles are equal, alternate angles are equal, and co-interior angles are uh, add up to 180 degrees. However, if a transversal line cuts two lines that is not parallel, we still have corresponding angles but clearly you can see those two angles are not the same size. We still have alternate angles, but they are not the same size. Right? There's still co-interior angles, but the two of them does not add up to 180 degrees. I hope that is clear. If they do add up to 180 degrees, these two lines are parallel. If that angle and this angle is equal to each other, alternate angles that are equal to each other, then it means that this line and this line is parallel to each other. If this angle and that angle is equal to each other, meaning corresponding angles, then the lines are parallel to each other. Right? When we work with parallel lines, we try to find the F for corresponding angles, a U for co-interior angles, and a Z for alternate angle. We have just explained that when we work with two lines in a transversal line and the lines are not parallel, this angle and that angle won't add up to 180 degrees as these two would. These two would add up to 180, but these two won't. It's only in parallel lines that we have co-interior angles that will add up to 180 degrees. Alternate angles will be equal. This angle and that angle by a long shot will never be equal. One thing that you must remember in this subject, you must always have fun. If you don't have fun with the subject, you're never going to enjoy it and you're never going to find pleasure in doing the work that your teacher sometimes assigns to you. FUN is the letters that we look for when we work with parallel lines. If these two lines are the parallel lines, we will find our corresponding angles, one at the bottom of that parallel line as well as bottom of this parallel line. And you can go to any picture. It will be at the bottom of these lines. Does not matter if the line protrudes or is further. This would be the transversal line and these will be the parallel lines. You will find that all corresponding angles with the letter F. With the co-interior angles, these two angles, with a, whichever way you look at it, it will always be in the shape of a U. Those two angles will add up to 180 degrees. When you work with alternate angles, angles on either side of the transversal line but it must be between the parallel lines are equal. You can pause if you would like to uh, see this closely but I've identified all the possible um, ifs that you could potentially get 
when you work with parallel lines and a transverse line. It does not have to be in this form. It could also be um, rotated. Um, and when I say be rotated, it could take a slanted form like that. It could take a slanted form like that. It could take a form like that. It could take a form like that. It does not matter. But the essence is it can even be given in a shape. So properties of shapes becomes very important. There is where you will find the corresponding angles. That is how you will find the co-interior angles. And remember they add up to 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus this angle will give me that angle. When I go to alternate angles, they are on either side of the transversal line. But they are between the parallel lines and they will be equal in size. Right, so as an experiment, I want you to tell me, press pause and tell me how many sets of corresponding angles you will get. Okay, let's see if you got them all. That angle and that angle will be corresponding angles. See the F? That angle and that angle will be corresponding angles. Do you notice the F? This angle and that angle will be equal. Do you notice the F? And last but not least, that angle and that angle will be equal to each other. So there's four sets of corresponding angles in this particular set of parallel lines. The one angle is at the bottom of one parallel line and the other one is at the bottom of the other parallel line but they are on the same side of the transversal line. If the one angle is at the top of the parallel line, the other one will also be on top of the parallel line, but on the same side of the transversal line. These angles are equal. I just quickly want to highlight it, that they are on the same side of the transversal line. Okay, so at the top of the, the parallel lines, on top of both parallel lines, but on the same side of the transversal line. Right, let's see how many alternate angles you can find. Remember we look for the letter Z. Whilst you are trying I will add the following for you so that you know. It must be between the parallel lines firstly. And they must be on either side of the transversal line. More than that I can't. I'm giving everything away. So, that angle and that angle will be equal. They are alternate angles. And this angle and that angle will be equal because they are alternate angles. So they are between the parallel lines but on either side of the transversal line. Co-interior angle. These are angles that add up to 180 degrees. So the secret for this one is they must be between the parallel lines, but on the same side of the transversal line. So that one and this one is on the same side of the transversal line. You use just my, rather than use the same. But remember, they are not equal to each other. So that's why I'm using a different token there. And then that angle and this angle will add up to 180 degrees because they are between the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal line. I want to conclude by doing a little bit of practice of previous work. In here you will find here we also have supplementary angles. This angle and that angle will add up to 180. On this straight line here, this angle and that angle is supplementary. They will add up to 180 degrees because it's on a straight line. Between on this line here, on this side of the line, this angle and that angle will add up to 180 degrees because that's a straight line. This is a straight line, so this angle and that angle added together will give me 180. Or this 180 degrees minus this one will give me that one. And notice that this one is opposite that one, vertically opposite. They will be the same size. This one and that one is vertically opposite, so they will be the same size. 
So it does not matter whether you work with parallel lines, they can still ask you about supplementary angles, complementary angles, vertically opposite angles. They can ask you about co-interior angles, they can ask you about alternate angles and about corresponding angles. Thank you for watching this video. We will see you in the next video. If you liked it, tell your friends, but if you loved it, please share your experience with us. Have a good day further.